Most entrepreneurs start out working a technical job, then quit to build their own business. But after a while, they get stressed, confused, and quickly fall into the deathly downward spiral called failure. Gerber calls these people technicians trying to be entrepreneurs. The fatal assumption is that if you understand the technical work of a business, you understand a business that does that technical work. In this video, you'll learn how to grow your business in a predictable and productive way so that you can finally claim the freedom, passion, and success you desire. This is a summary of The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. Part 1. The E-Myth and American Small Business The Entrepreneur, the Manager, the Technician The entrepreneur is the visionary, the dreamer, the strategist, the ideas man. The entrepreneur has a strong need for control and lives in the future. The manager is the planner, the one who builds a house and lives in it forever, the one who runs after the entrepreneur to clean up the mess. And the technician is the action taker. He or she enjoys tinkering with things and is loyal to the saying, if you want it done right, do it yourself. The technician lives in the present and is not interested in thinking and ideas. We all embody aspects of the entrepreneur, the manager, and the technician. All need to be in harmony to be successful in business. The three phases of growth. The technician's phase. There comes a point when the technician realizes that the business can no longer run or grow if he or she doesn't make a change. That's when most people quit. The adolescence phase. This is when you make a decision to get help. It often happens during a crisis or in the infancy stage. And then we have the maturity phase. A mature business has a clear definition of how it got where it is where it wants to go, and how it will get there. Part 2. The Turnkey Revolution Work on your business, not in it. For years, I was working in my business as a technician, which involved animating videos like this one. But then I realized I couldn't scale the business if I was the only one animating. There's a limit on how many videos one can make. So now, instead of working in my business, I work on my business by creating systems that enable other people to create an unlimited amount of videos. Pause this video and ask yourself these five important questions. The franchise model. Think McDonald's. There are thousands of chains around the world and every single one of them looks, feels, and operates in a similar way. Creating a business based on a franchise model enables you to detach your time from the business so you can finally have the freedom you've been dying for. It also enables you to replicate your business thousands of times and transform it into an asset that appeals to potential buyers. Here are six rules for a successful franchise model. Number one, the model will provide consistent value to your customers, employees, suppliers, and lenders beyond what they expect. Two, the model will be operated by people with the lowest possible level of skill. 3. The model will stand out as a place of impeccable order. 4. All work in the model will be documented in operations manuals. 5. The model will provide a uniformly predictable service to the customer. And 6. The model will utilize a uniform color, dress, and facilities code. Part 3. Building a small business that works. The business development process. It's made up of three parts. The first is innovation, and that's all about testing and implementing new ideas to move the business forward and have your uniqueness identify in the mind of your customers. An example of an innovation is testing the correlation between what clothes you wear and how many sales you make. During sales interactions, wear a brown suit for three weeks, then a blue suit for the next three weeks. You may notice that sales increase. Next up is quantification. Innovation by itself is useless. It needs to be quantified using metrics, which 99% of business owners don't do and then wonder why they fail. How would you know how many sales you make by wearing a blue suit instead of a brown suit? You would need to measure how many prospects you engage with and the amount who buy something before and after you apply changes to nothing but your suit color. By looking at the numbers, you would know exactly whether or not your innovation had been successful. And lastly, orchestration. Once an innovation has been implemented and quantified as a success, then it needs to be orchestrated. That means doing the same thing, the same way, every time. If wearing a blue suit increases sales, then wear a blue suit every time. 
Making a random choice about what you wear will devalue your business and the customer experience because it introduces complexity and disorder. The Business Development Program. You should be able to imagine yourself taking a potential buyer through your business and effortlessly explain each part and how it works with every other part. The end goal is to create an ordered, predictable money-making machine. Your primary aim. You cannot live your life or build the business you want if you never define what you want. So ask yourself, what do you want your life and business to look like? Define it. Here's an example of the primary aim for 1% Better. Our ultimate vision is to develop and merge our education system with the traditional education system so millions of children worldwide grow into adults who implement the mindset and skills required to live a fulfilling life. Your strategic objective. It's a catalyst to achieve your primary aim. What does your business have to do for you to achieve your primary aim? Define it. Your organizational strategy. If you have ever watched an episode of Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares, you have probably seen him gathered around with the restaurant team when he asks, who is a head chef? The three most common answers are, we don't know, we don't have one, or a chef points to their manager and says, both of us. Ramsay proceeds to lose his mind. Job roles are not clearly defined, which creates absolute chaos in the business. If everybody is doing everything, then who the hell is accountable for anything? If Jill wants to go for lunch, does she tell Jack or Jerry? Create an organizational chart, which is a diagram that shows the structure of a business. Clearly define the departments, job roles, and relationships between them. Your management strategy. When you go through a McDonald's drive through nearly every time you will be greeted with, Welcome to McDonald's, may I take your order? You proceed to pay at the pay window and drive to the next one to receive your order. It's quick and simple. This is a strategically designed management strategy, so you have a great experience every time. A management strategy is not dependent on hiring someone with an MBA. It is dependent on a management system which is designed to produce a marketing result. In this case, it produces more sales by having hungry customers on the go return for more. Your people strategy. How do you get other people to do what you want them to do? The answer is to create an environment in which doing it is more important than not doing it. Sloppy entrepreneurs typically give no formal training. If they do, they talk to their new employees for a few hours, then throw them into the job and expect them to do well. This is a recipe for disaster. It is absolutely critical to communicate your vision to your employees so they feel like they are part of something much bigger. And taking time to provide formal training, as well as truly listening to them, will set the tone for a working relationship where your employees love you and get the work done with pride. Your marketing strategy. Forget about your dreams, hopes, and goals. The only thing that matters when it comes to marketing is what your customers want, and not what you think they want. To find out what your customers actually want, you need to know their demographics. Where do they live? How old are they? What is their career? You get this information by asking them. Once you've established the demographics you are serving, it becomes easier to make strategic marketing decisions that turn into rewarding results. Your system strategy. A system is a set of things, actions, ideas, and information that interact with each other, and in so doing, alter other systems. Everything is a system. This video, the breakfast you had this morning, how you brush your teeth, they are all systems and there are three types. If you want to know what they are, click the link in the description below to find out in my blog post. Let's recap. In part one, the e-myth in American small business, we learned about the entrepreneur, the manager, and the technician. We learned about the three phases of growth, the technician's phase, the adolescence phase, and the maturity phase. In part two, the turnkey revolution, we learned to work on your business, not in it, and the importance of developing a franchise model. And in part three, building a small business that works, we learned about the business development process and its three parts, innovation, quantification, and orchestration. We also learned about the business development program, which consists of your primary aim, your strategic objective, your organizational strategy, your management strategy, your people strategy, your marketing strategy, and your system strategy. If you are serious about creating your own six-figure business, I can connect a limited number of you with my buddy Alex Vitkin, who has taught countless students how to do it and can teach you too. 
Simply click the link in the description to learn more.